we have the highest prevalence of kidney disease in the country and that's really because we have a, a nexus, a crossroads, so to speak, between high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, ethnicity, all these things contribute to kidney disease. We at the George Washington Transplant Institute are lucky because we have some partners that are joining with us in this battle against kidney disease. And that includes the Minority Organ Transplant and Tissue Educational Program, as well as the Ron and Joy Paul Kidney Center. We are all coming together because we are, realize that we're fighting a battle against kidney disease. In our area, we have the number one prevalence of kidney disease because of this nexus of ethnicity and uh, hypertension and diabetes. All of these things work against our patients in the Washington DC area. We need to educate people about all of their options, including hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis, live donor kidney transplant, deceased donor kidney transplant, paired kidney exchanges, desensitization. All of these things are important because no other way are we going to be able to make a dent in something that's causing so many problems in this area. High blood pressure and diabetes are really the two main reasons why people develop kidney disease. And this is why when I speak to people out in the community, I always want them to understand that it's never okay to have high blood pressure. Even a little bit of high blood pressure is a problem, just like a little bit of diabetes is a problem. If you've been told that you have high blood pressure or that you have pre-diabetes or you might have a little bit of diabetes, all of these things are very important and need to be addressed immediately. In the Washington DC area, we have the highest prevalence of kidney disease. Usually people with end-stage renal disease, they have kidney disease because of either high blood pressure or diabetes or a combination thereof. So, the patients that have kidney disease usually had something that they didn't know for a long period of time. So they probably had high blood pressure that they didn't know or diabetes. These things tend to cluster in families. So people that have kidney disease tend to have family members that can also have the precursors of kidney disease or may actually have kidney disease. These things need to be discussed and uh, found out in these families because if you ever get to the point where you need a transplant, it's going to be people that are in your families or maybe your friends that could possibly be donors for you. There are five stages to kidney disease, and it's only when you get to stage three, four, or five that you really need to be getting treatment. Once you get to stage five, there are certain things that have to happen. You have to have what's called renal replacement therapy. Renal replacement therapy is either hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis, or it could be transplant. So people that get to stage five kidney disease have to have renal replacement therapy. You could be at stage three, stage four, and not even know it. And that's why people need to have regular tests by their doctors to determine if they have kidney disease. This can be determined with a blood test or a urine test or both. People that have kidney disease and get to stage five either need dialysis or transplant. The best option, meaning the option that will allow you to live the longest, is transplantation. People that need a transplant have to be in relatively good state of health. And the only way you can determine if you're a good candidate for transplant is to be evaluated by transplant professionals. You have to go in for what's called a transplant evaluation. Here at the George Washington Transplant Institute, we evaluate people to determine if transplant is going to be a good option for them. There are two types of transplant that you can get if you need a kidney transplant. It's either a live donor transplant where someone donates to you or you are put on a list and you can get a transplant from someone who dies who determined that they would want to be a kidney donor. Anyone that has kidney disease, once they get to the point where they're on dialysis, should be evaluated for a kidney transplant.
There are many patients that have been on dialysis for many years and they wonder if they would actually be a candidate for transplant after so many years. I have found that patients that have been on dialysis for five, ten, even longer are very good candidates for transplant. We have changed the way people are um, listed for transplant and the more years you've been on dialysis, the quicker you move up the transplant list. So if you remain a good candidate, and by good candidate I mean if you're in relatively good state of health, you would be a good candidate for transplant if you are healthy otherwise. Many patients have been told or they surmise that because they are overweight that they would not be a candidate for transplant. And this could not be further from the truth. Most people that have kidney disease are also overweight. So being overweight is not going to be an obstacle in and of itself. We are willing to work with people that are overweight, that have problems with obesity and diabetes and high blood pressure, even patients that have had cancer in the past. What I would tell people is, if you desire transplant, you should come in and be evaluated by the experts. Here at the George Washington Transplant Institute, we have a team that will go through all of these issues and try to deal with them each individually so that people can be in the best situation to try to get a kidney transplant. Patients that have kidney disease and that are on dialysis oftentimes have doctors that uh, care for them called nephrologists. Their nephrologists can call our office to set up a appointment or the patient themselves or um, another doctor, a primary care physician. If you have kidney disease, all you need to do is let us know that you would like to come in for a transplant evaluation and we will get you an appointment usually within a few weeks of the call.